What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Retro Hoop Collectibles. I have zero mobility in my arms and my upper body. I made a grave mistake and decided at the ripe age of 38 years old to try to get back into shape. So I'm in a lot of pain right now. But uh, I wanted to do this video because I think there's a lot of conversation uh, going on recently regarding a very particular topic that I think is a topic that needs to be talked about uh, more and uh, needs to be talked about openly uh, within the hobby. And that topic is, um, you know, this recent situation of like pump and dump schemes and uh, influencers pumping up certain cards and, and uh, you know, just to... to you know, raise the value of their collection so that they can turn around and sell them on the open market and make money. I did a video about pumping and dumping recently. If you, I mean, uh, well, not recently, a while back. If you guys want to watch it, you can go ahead. Um, there's some folks out there that, that have made some really good videos. Sports Card Radio just did a video. Uh, I think it's uh, AIH. AIH Sports. Let me see. I think that's who it was. That... Um, Yeah, AIH Sports, Rahul from AIH Sports uh, has done several videos. This guy is probably one of the more, um, uh, you know, prolific folks doing videos out there calling out some of these some of these players. That's not what I'm looking to do. The, I think those of you who are in the hobby and have been in the hobby long enough, you guys already know who these players are. You guys already know who the bad characters are. Uh, I, there's no need for me to continue to, to talk about that. But I do want to talk about the topic of um, pumping and dumping and not necessarily pumping and dumping in general but I, I, I kind of came across this situation or, or this this concept and this idea um, I just recently did a podcast um, and I'll link the, I'll link it down below so you guys can um, can take a look at it Big Scott and um, Natsman was on their podcast uh, this past weekend where we were talking just general conversation about collecting and um the question was posed to me was a pretty simple question it was a very simple question and a question that every collector should be able to answer with relative ease and i think that if we go along as collectors and we answer this question it'll better position us going forward to have fun in the hobby and the question was pretty simple i was asked how do you collect okay how do you collect what do you collect how do you collect and it was a question that was pretty simple but it, it it really made me think about that very simple fact is how do i collect i had to kind of take inventory of myself for a second and for me it was really easy it's a very simple question to answer for me because i collect I am primarily what I would consider to be or what I call a hometown collector. Okay. I like sports in general. I like basketball, I like football, I like baseball. Um, you know, that's pretty much it really. I'm, I'll watch a soccer game if it's meaningful, but for the most part, it's the big three, right? Um, and more specifically within those three sports are the individual teams that represent my hometown. If there's three things that I really like to represent about myself is my family, my country where I'm from, which is Mexico, and the state that I live in and the city that I live in, which is Houston, Texas. Um, and so because I'm so tied to my city where I live, I'm very passionate about local sports in this city. So for me, it's the Houston Texans, it's the Houston Astros, and last but certainly not least is my Houston Rockets. Basketball is the biggest thing that I have a passion for. And so those three things kind of make up my collector profile. And so it's with that collector profile and with that idea in mind that I move through the hobby, buying things that I like that fall within that profile, okay? And for me, that's what it's always been about. It's always been about collecting my hometown. I, I was fortunate enough to come up during a time where my rockets were world champions, back-to-back -back world champions, where the Astros uh, back in 2005 made it all the way, didn't win, 
and then 2018 won. So there's some championship pedigree. Uh, you guys notice I skipped over my Texans because they're just they've always been a dumpster fire, but they're my Texans and it is what it is. Um, but the city has championship pedigree to a certain extent, and uh, that makes for some really good collecting. And so it's with that profile, it's with that uh, you know concept in mind that drives my collecting. Why am I harping on that so much? And why did I bring up influencers and pump and dumpers at the beginning? When you have a good understanding of why you collect, it's really hard to have anybody else tell you what to collect. And I think as collectors in this hobby, we all need to take a step back. If you're a collector, now don't get me wrong, if you're a if you're in it strictly for the financial flip, if you're in it strictly for the financial gain, if you're a dealer that is purely in it for the money, um, d do you. I, I, I don't ever want to discourage anybody from, from, from making money. And then if you just so happen to do it with something that you like, that's even better, right? That's, that's the ultimate goal. But those of us who are just like legitimate, like full-blown collectors, we do this because we love it. And if we happen to make a little money at it so that we can sell and consolidate and buy the next big thing then all the better, right? I mean, I know people who literally will do the flip on things that they don't care about so that they can continue to fund the things that they care about, right? So I don't want to discredit that side of the hobby at all. That's that's not what I'm doing here. What I'm saying is that if you understand who you are as a collector and why it is that you collect, then it becomes very difficult for you to be swayed by these influencers. Now, I've been touted as an influencer. I really hope that if I do have any influence on 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 this on this platform, it's it's at least an influence to drive you to be um, objective in how you buy and how you collect, um, because that's how I am. Because I'm so fixed in the way that I collect and the reasons why I collect, then it becomes very easy for me to make decisions. It makes it very easy for me to cap myself at certain dollar amounts because I'm never really thinking about the gain. I'm just thinking about the feeling. And I may buy things that make sense to nobody else in this world, but when I buy it, regardless of the dollar amount, it makes me happy. And I think that if everybody just took a step back and really looked at it from that perspective, influencers, pump and dumpers, people on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, whatever, shouldn't have much sway over what you buy. And I think that's how I wanted to approach this conversation because everybody's talking about all these guys that have been pumping and dumping and all that stuff, but nobody's really talking about why the hobby has been so susceptible to this. And it's because there's been a crop of new collectors that are coming into the game that don't really understand who they are as collectors. And when you don't understand who you are and what you stand for, then you'll fall for everything. For anything, that's kind of the the uh, the saying, right? So look, I, I certainly don't want to come off as 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 if I'm sitting on a high horse, but I think it's I think it's important that we do that, that we take inventory of who we are as collectors. And buy what makes us happy and buy what we like. It's hard to lose when you when you buy that way and you collect that way. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think about this because I've really debated whether I wanted to make this video because I, I really didn't want to come off preachy. But I, I just I feel like it's something that has to be said and I really don't see too many people talking about this aspect of collecting. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think. If you have a good idea of who you are as a collector, what kind of collector are you? I want to know. Um, so, yeah, I hope you guys took this conversation in the right way. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments. I appreciate you guys watching. Don't forget Instagram, Retro Hoop Breaks, The Card Hedge Podcast on Apple, Google, and Stitcher. And if you like these kind of videos, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, leave me a comment. I'll catch you guys on the next video. Love y'all. Peace.